Age of Mythology is a game of heroes and monsters, mighty armies and epic deeds. Lead your culture through the ages, from humble beginnings in a small village, to mighty citadels protected by the power of the gods. Tear down the walls of Troy. Battle giants in the frozen wastes near Midgard and fight armies of Anubites in the shifting sands of Egypt. The gods, as a token of appreciation, may someday reward you with great earth-changing powers in Age of Mythology. Today, your task is a simple one. The hero, Arkantos, has sailed to an island far from his home in Atlantis, seeking the Cyclops. The slaying of this mythical beast will bring great glory to Arkantos and his hunters. But before we take on the mythical creature, we must learn how to march. Left click on Arkantos to select him. Now right click near the blue flag to move along the path. If you're ever unsure about what to do next, check the objectives banner. Click the flashing objectives banner to see your current goal. Move your mouse to the top of the screen to scroll the view in the main game window to the next flag. Well done! Right click the ground near the next flag to keep moving down the beach. Here come the other Atlantean warriors. Drag a box around Arkantos and the other men. All of the hunters are now selected and will move in a group. Continue down the path to the next flag. Arkantos and his men have not yet explored this part of the island. So part of the path is still hidden in darkness. The black area represents unexplored territory. Scroll this the screen is where the beast's trail continues. Right click the flag where the trail continues beyond the black area. The men will move forward revealing Continue down the path to the next flag. Notice the diamond shaped window at the bottom right corner of the screen. This is the mini-map. The mini-map shows you where you are and also places you haven't explored yet. Left clicking on the mini-map will instantly move the view in the main game window. When you're ready, continue down the path and seek out the Cyclops. Ne. Ne. Malista. Ne. Look there, the Cyclops! To attack, make sure your units are selected, then right-click on the Cyclops. Again the gods bless us! We have returned! To properly honor the gods, you must gather 100 food, 100 wood, and 100 gold. Then build a temple. The displays in the bottom left corner of the screen show that you already have some food. But if you're going to gather more resources, you'll have to use what food you have to create or train a villager. The flashing structure is a town center. Left click the town center to select it. Now click the flashing button to begin training a villager. Training a villager will cost you food. When training a unit, you can check the progress by looking at the flashing icon at the bottom of the screen, just to the left of the minimap. Well done! You've trained a villager. Prostagma. To gather resources, left click on a villager to select him, then right click on the resource. Maista. For example, the flashing goats are a good source of food. With a villager well done. The villager will continue to gather food until you tell him to stop or he runs out of goats. Look! Additional villagers have come to help gather resources. Maista. Select another villager and put him to work by right-clicking on the flashing farm. 
now gather wood from trees and gold from gold mines. Select a villager then right click the resource. If you're ever unsure about what to do next, you have plenty of food. Click the Build a temple. Select a villager. Notice the buttons at the bottom left side of the screen. These are the buildings the villager can build, such as houses and granaries. Left click the temple button, then left click the main game window to place it. The villager that built the temple has started to worship, and your favor is increasing. Additional worshippers will make your favor rise more rapidly. Select additional villagers, Έτοιμο. then right-click the temple. Έστω. Πρόσεχε, μάλιστα. Offerings have pleased the gods. Look there, pirate ships. Hmm, those might be Camos's pirates. Quick, back to camp. We'll prepare a welcome they won't soon forget. Arkantos and the other hunters are mighty warriors, but you'll need to create a larger army if you're going to defeat the pirates. But first, since you already have a temple, you should advance to the next age. Select the town center. The flashing button allows you to advance to the next age. Click it now. The choice of minor god determines which mythical creatures you can summon and what powers now, the gods to increase your army of warriors. Building an academy will let you train hoplites. Select a villager. The academy is flashing. You have plenty of resources, so select it and place it. You can send additional villagers to help build the academy by selecting a group and right-clicking the foundation of the academy. But make sure to leave a few gathering resources. The academy is complete. Now, select it. flashing button to train a hoplite. Clicking multiple times will queue up several hoplites to train one after another. For now, train four hoplites to help defend the camp. You have reached your population limit. In order to increase your population limit, order a villager to build a house. Select a villager. The house button is flashing. Select it and place it. done. Each house will increase your maximum population, but you're limited to 10 houses. 
To further increase your population yeah. limit, you could claim additional settlements such Excellent. as this one. Select a villager. Click the flashing button. Most buildings can be placed anywhere, but a town center can a sentry tower would help us spot the pirates when they approach. The flagged location would be an excellent place to build a sentry tower. Select a villager, choose the sentry tower, and build it near the flag. Excellent. Now we'll see them coming. For extra protection, you should improve your tower. Select the tower. The flashing button will improve all of your towers to watch towers. Left click it now. Mythical creatures are summoned from your temple and can be extremely effective against the enemy's human soldiers and buildings. Select the temple. It's the flashing building near the center of your village. You have enough favor and other resources to summon a centaur. The centaur is very fast and an excellent ranged unit. He will help us scout the island and locate the pirate camp. Summon a centaur by clicking the flashing button. The pirates are approaching. Protect your villagers by ringing the town bell. Select the town center. Click the flashing town bell button. When the town bell rings, your villagers take shelter in the nearest town center or watchtower. You have fought off the pirate's initial attack. Now send all of your villagers back to work. Select the town center. Click the flashing button. Your villagers will leave the safety of the town center and return to their tasks. You have trained enough soldiers to defeat the pirates. Their camp is located here. Gather your army together and send them to attack. The gods have rewarded you with the meteor power. God powers can be used at any time and can completely change the course of battle. However, they can only be used once. Show the pirates what the power of the gods can do. Left click the flashing meteor button, then left click somewhere in the pirate camp. Victory is ours! Well done, men! Break camp and load the ships! We sail for Atlantis with the tide! There are three things to remember when playing the Norse. Instead of building granaries or storehouses, the Norse bring their resources to mobile drop sites known as ox carts. Ox carts can be trained out of the town center and ordered to move almost anywhere on the map. Another difference for the Norse is how they gain favor. Instead of praying to their gods, the Norse gain favor through battle. They simply fight to please their gods. Whenever a Norse soldier is fighting anything in the game, your favor will increase. The final difference is that all Norse buildings are constructed or repaired by infantry units. Norse gatherers can only build farms and collect resources. Any Norse infantry unit can build and repair buildings. When playing the Egyptians, there are two things to remember. First, the Pharaoh is one of your most important units. He can be tasked to empower different buildings in your city. 
While the Pharaoh is empowering a completed building, the building will train units, research improvements, and gather resources faster. The Pharaoh can also be tasked on foundations, speeding the building's construction. In combat, your Pharaoh is very strong against myth units. You only have one Pharaoh, so where and when to use him is very important. The Egyptians gain favor by building monuments. There are five different monuments that can be built. You can only build one of each. You will gain favor faster with each new one constructed. When commanding the Atlanteans, there are a few things to remember. First, their citizens take longer to train and are more expensive. However, they gather and build nearly three times as fast as other villagers. Also, they do not require any drop sites when they are gathering. Atlanteans scout using oracles. Oracles have a small line of sight when moving, but when still, their line of sight grows. Atlanteans can instantly promote any of their human units to heroes, for a price. Units that are turned into heroes are a little better at everything they do, but they are much better at fighting enemy myth units. To get favor, Atlanteans must control town centers. The more town centers an Atlantean player has, the faster he generates favor. Unlike other cultures, the Atlanteans can build new town centers from the very start of the game.